Hi, I'm Kim Steele-Peter, and I'm one of the staff at Tacoma Pierce County Health Department leading our response to COVID-19. In this video, we will learn how to complete a COVID-19 disease investigation interview. You will also observe several scenarios you may experience while on a call. Preparing for the interview is just as important as the interview itself. We'll see what an investigator does to prepare for a call. Before every call, I find a quiet place to conduct the interview, review the patient's information, and double check the guidance from the Washington State Department of Health. Now that our interviewer is ready, she will begin the interview. She will be calling a male in his 30s. This person was tested for COVID-19 on July 1st. Their test result came back from Washington State Public Health Lab. Let's watch our investigator initiate the call. Hi, my name is Sydney Rose. I'm calling from the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. Is this Lance Phillips? Yes. I'm calling about a recent test you took. Would you be able to verify your date of birth and address so I can verify I'm speaking with the right person? Yes, my birthday is January 1st, 1985, and my address is 123 Candyland Drive. Thank you. It looks like you were tested on July 1st for COVID-19. Have you received your test results yet? Yes, I was told yesterday that my test was positive. Okay. Today I'm calling to do an assessment. Basically, I ask some questions and I can answer any questions you might have. Is right now a good time to talk? Yes. We always verify the address to confirm we are speaking with the right person. Make sure the case's address is up to date and double check that they live in Pierce County. Sometimes the person being interviewed does not know about their test result and we are the first one to call them. Let's watch how the interviewer notifies someone of their result. I'm calling about a recent test that you took. Would you be able to verify your date of birth and address so I can verify I'm speaking with the right person? Yes, my birthday is January 1st, 1985, and my address is 123 Candyland Drive. Thank you. It looks like you were tested on July 1st for COVID-19. Have you received your test results yet? Uh, no, no one has called me. Do I have COVID-19? I feel horrible and I'm really nervous. I understand. I have the test results and you did test positive for COVID-19, but don't worry. I'm calling to ask some questions, give guidance moving forward, and answer any questions you might have. Our investigators experience many reactions to cases learning that they have tested positive. Be prepared for someone to be upset, angry, or confused, and try your best to support and educate them on the call. The beginning of the interview is the most critical time to build rapport with the case. This is the time you establish yourself as a trusted and reliable source of public health information. The case may be scared or nervous. It is important to remain confident on the phone, even if you don't have all the answers. All the information collected on the call is protected health information and will remain confidential. Let's watch how the interviewer protects information. I have a couple questions to ask, if that's okay with you? Yes, that's fine. Do you have an email you could share so we can send you follow-up information? Yes, my email is lancephillips at email.com. Okay, thanks. My next question is, which race do you identify with? I don't want to share that. I'm not comfortable saying. Okay, that's fine. What about your country of origin? I don't want to share that. I'm not comfortable. Okay, I understand. None of this information will be shared and it's completely confidential. Do you still not want to share your race or country of origin? No, I don't. That's okay. Thank you for answering these questions. I am now going to ask about when you started feeling sick. Okay. Sometimes people are uncomfortable sharing information with us. As an investigator, it's important to collect as much information as you can. Never guess what someone is trying to say or write down an answer that you think you know the answer to. Record information accurately. If someone is uncomfortable answering a question, remind them that the information is protected and confidential. Now let's look at a situation where you have to protect health information when speaking with a close contact of a case. Hi, my name is Sydney with the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. I'm looking for Leo Brown. This is Leo. I'm calling today because you identified as someone who's been in close contact with someone with COVID-19. We're doing these interviews to help and inform. Is now a good time to talk? I was exposed? Who was I exposed to with the COVID-19? I'm sorry, I can't share the information. It is confidential. It looks like you were exposed on June 30th. Are you feeling sick? I bet it was my coworker, Ashley. She was really sick the other day and 
She wasn't at work today. Unfortunately, I can't tell you who it is. That information is protected by law. I hope you understand. Let's start from the beginning. How are you feeling? Okay. I still think it was her, but I understand. I've been kind of tired lately and I'm having a hard time smelling anything. Now that you've seen the importance of protecting information, it's important to remember this information is protected by law. The exception to this is if you were speaking to the parent of a minor or a case or contacts medical power of attorney. In these instances, you may share protected health information. Let's continue with the case investigation we were following earlier. Okay. Today I'm calling to do an assessment. Basically, I ask some questions and I answer any questions that you might have. Is right now a good time to talk? Yes. Thank you. Since you've been sick, what kind of symptoms have you been having? I've had chills, a slight cough. I'm having a hard time smelling or tasting anything and I'm just exhausted. All right. At any point, have you had a fever over 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit? No. What was the first day of your symptoms? Tuesday, June 30th. When we do these calls, we discuss contagious periods. People are contagious two days before symptoms start. So for you, that would be Sunday the 28th and at least 10 days after symptoms begin. So until Wednesday, July 8th. Can you isolate until the 8th? Yeah, I think so. I'm concerned for my family though. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing other than staying inside. That's something I would love to go over with you. Let's finish up with your information first, then we can focus on your family. Where do you work? I'm a welder at Quick Construction. Okay. And what was your last day there? Uh, three days ago on Monday. Uh, that was the day I started feeling sick and lost my sense of smell. What's your typical shift? I usually work 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Do you work closely with anyone? Uh, not really. Uh, we come in, put our gear on, and work on whatever project we're assigned. Um, I've been keeping my distance from people and I'm not close with anyone there. Has your work been notified of your positive test results and allowed you to stay home? Yes, uh, they already know. They gave me two weeks off from my test day. Great. Now we know you can stay home safely. Let's discuss your household. Who lives with you? My mom and my daughter live here, just the three of us. Let's get some information on them really quick. What are their names and date of births? Uh, my mom's name is Shirley Phillips and her date of birth is February 2nd, 1952. Uh, my daughter's name is Alyssa Phillips and her birthday is March 14th, 2015. Your daughter is around five then. Does she go to daycare or school? Uh, she's just at home right now. My mom watches her when I go to work since she's retired. And how is your daughter feeling? Has she had any symptoms? She's doing fine. Uh, she hasn't said she feels sick at all and is wild as usual. That's great to hear. Since you're your daughter's main caregiver, she will have to stay home even longer than you. She will have to quarantine for 14 days after your isolation period ends. So that's July 22nd. Can you do this? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, my mom can stay home with her. So that means my mom has to stay home until that day too, since we all live together and can't be apart. She hasn't had any symptoms either. Correct. If they do start to have symptoms, we advise they isolate for 10 days after their symptoms begin. They also must have three days without a fever and their symptoms should improve before they leave the house. Do they need to get tested if they have symptoms? Not necessarily, but they should call their doctor if they have one or a local clinic to see if they recommend testing. Odds are if they develop symptoms, they have it because you already tested positive. All right. Okay. Now that we already covered your household members, is there anyone else who you've been in close contact with from the June 28th, which was two days before your symptoms started? Uh, yes, my friend came over for a bit to visit on June 29th. Okay, can you tell me about that visit? Uh, we just hung out, ate pizza, played cards, uh, then she went home. Okay, we do reach out to people that were in close contact during a case's contagious period to give them guidance and offer help. We keep the case completely anonymous. What is your friend's name and phone number? It's uh, Sally May. Her phone number is 1-888-222-7777. Thank you. Those are all the questions I have. Do you have any questions for me? Always give your case the opportunity to ask questions. It's important to answer them to the best of your ability. If you don't know the answer, it is all right to say, I don't know the answer to that. Let me check with my supervisor. Don't guess. 
it's better to work with your team and your lead to communicate a consistent, accurate public health message. Now that you've seen the rest of a case interview, we'll explore some other difficult situations you might encounter. Some people do not want to share the names of the people they've been in contact with. Let's see how our investigator handles this. Now that we've covered your household members, is there anyone else that you've been in close contact with from June 24th, which was the two days before your symptoms started? Yes, my friend came over to visit on June 27th. All right, tell me about it. We just hung out and watched TV for a few hours, then she went home. So we do reach out to contact anyone cases we're in contact with while they were contagious to give them guidance and offer help. We keep it completely anonymous. What is your friend's name? That's okay, she knows I called her. That's fantastic that you let her know. We would still like to call to see if they have any questions or concerns we can help with. I don't want to tell you my friend's name or contact information. I'm not comfortable with that. I understand. How about you give her my information so that she can call us if she wants since she already knows she's been exposed. Okay, that's fine. Sometimes we can't get every piece of information we'd like. It's important to leave as much open communication as possible so we are available to offer guidance to the public. Another unique situation you could face is with a healthcare worker. Healthcare workers are at high risk of being exposed to COVID-19 and often work with vulnerable people in the community. Some healthcare workers are tested even if they don't have symptoms. Jane, do you work? Yes, I'm a nurse. I work on the pediatrics floor. Okay, what was your last day there? Four days ago, Monday, that was the same day I got tested at work. What's your typical shift? Uh, we rotate shifts. I worked 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on my last day there. Great. Since you're asymptomatic, we have certain guidelines for when you can return to work. You must isolate at home for at least 10 days mm -hmm. from your test, so that's six more days from now. When you do return to work, you should wear a mask until the 14th day from testing and be restricted from working with immunocompromised patients. Can you do this? Yes, that's fine. I've already talked to work and they've given me the time off to isolate at home. If you do start to develop symptoms, you should seek re-evaluation from your workplace following Washington State Department of Health guidance. Great, I will do that. Thank you. As we have seen, isolation is the final piece of a case investigation and it is key to controlling the spread of disease. Sometimes people think they can't isolate safely at home, but actually can. Let's watch. All right, so people are contagious two days before symptoms start. So for you, that'd be around Saturday the 16th and at least 10 days after symptom onset. So until Thursday the 28th, can you quarantine till at least the 28th? No, I don't think so. I have a roommate that has asthma and the other one gets dialysis treatments. Um, so I was thinking I should leave and go stay with my friends. Okay, so I know you're concerned for the people you live with, but it's best to stay put you'll expose fewer people by staying right there. Mm -hmm. um, let's figure out if there's a way you can safely isolate. Tell me about your house setup. Well, we each have our room and there's an upstairs and downstairs bathroom and the main kitchen is also downstairs. All right, that's good news. Are you able to use just one bathroom and your roommates could use the other one? I guess I could use the upstairs bathroom. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'd give it a try. Just let them know why. You can stay in your room while you isolate. Mm -hmm. If you need to come into common areas such as hallways, I just make sure you mask up. Is there someone who could bring you food to your bedroom door? Um, I have one roommate who could sometimes, but I don't know if she would want to. Okay, so it's definitely worth asking if you have to go into the kitchen to cook for yourself, uh, just make sure to wear a mask, wipe everything down as soon as you're done using it. We wanna limit as much exposure as possible. Okay, um, I'll talk to my roommates after this phone call and see what we can do. Okay, perfect. In some instances, cases do not have the option to isolate safely or away from others. We often see this with people living homeless or people who live in smaller housing with many other people. Tacoma Pierce County Health Department has some options available in this situation. Let's see how the investigator talks through this with the case. People are contagious two days before the symptoms start. So for you, that would be Saturday the 16th and at least 10 days after symptom onset. So until Thursday the 28th, can you quarantine till at least that time? I don't think so. I don't exactly have anywhere to stay. I sleep either at the homeless shelter or sometimes I stay at a friend's house. 
We do have a team that could try to coordinate somewhere to stay while you wait out your contagious period. Would this be something you're interested in? Yeah, what do I do? Can you perform daily activities such as feeding yourself, showering, and using the restroom? Yeah, I do just fine taking care of myself. If there was a hotel room where you could have no visitors, must isolate and be in the room the whole time, would you be okay with that? Oh, I could do that, yeah. Okay, it isn't guaranteed, but I'll pass along your information to our coordination team. They'll call you and you'll move forward with them. Thank you, and I look forward to hearing from them. Isolation or quarantine can seem scary or seem impossible for some. It can be hard to stay at home and away from others. As an investigator, you may speak to some people that will tell you that they will not isolate or quarantine as they have been instructed to. Let's see how the investigator encourages the person they are speaking with to stay at home and stay safe. Can you quarantine till that time? No, I have to work. I'm out of sick leave and time off. My employer won't give me that time off and I need to support my family. I understand. Have you already spoken to your work about why you may need to stay home and if there's any options for you there? Yes, they said we have to use our own time off or not get paid. I'm the only one working and if I don't get paid for two weeks, that'll ruin us. Okay, some employers may need a little bit more discussion. Most places would rather have one sick employee out rather than risk their whole team. I do have a phone number that you can give them because we'd love to try and work something out. Would you be open to giving that to your employer? Yes, one moment while I grab something to write with. Sometimes we have to work cases differently. People usually want to do the right thing, but they may need extra help from us. Each interview should be tailored to the needs of your case, and you may have to help out in creative or unique ways. Disease investigation requires excellent communication skills. Depending on the person you speak to, you may face some unexpected or complicated scenarios. It's okay to not know all the answers and ask questions. Let your supervisor know if you need anything to be successful in this work. Thank you for being a critical part of protecting the health of Pierce County.